A lot of the research in systems level work and microbiome and microbiota research has been focused on obesity and diabetes, cardiovascular disease, but we know that there's a very big link between diabetes and Alzheimer's disease risk. So it feeds into the sort of what happens long-term exposure, because unlike the bugs which should stay in your gut unless you've got a real problem like sepsis, it's the, it's the metabolites you are constantly exposed to. So the question is then what happens with long-term exposure to elevated levels of certain metabolites because some will be good for you, some will be bad and we've seen that with the 20 or so we've screened. Um, so it's just it's building our knowledge base basically because we've been focused on the gut-liver axis for a while and it's only recently we've started looking at the gut-liver-brain axis linking in everything and realising that our microbiota and our systemic health are inextricably linked and we really need to look at the whole thing and not just bits in isolation. The, the main challenges of this kind of research, it depends really, humans were challenged because everyone's different and everyone's microbiota is different and when you do dietary studies people don't tell the truth about what they've been eating sometimes, compliance is an issue. You've also got sex differences because some of the genes like TMA for instance, the detoxification gene in the human body is responsive or receptive whether you're male or female so that has a problem but humans are ultimately the best things to look, work with because that's what we're interested in is human health. Animal models are great for doing some of the basic work looking at cellular mechanisms but they're not so great translationally for looking at how the microbiome changes because mice have very different micro very different bacteria in their gut compared with humans so you've got to weigh up the pros and cons the animal work is very good for looking at fundamental cellular processes like effects on blood brain barriers because there's not very much difference between the structure of the human and the mouse brain in that in sense um, but yeah if you're looking at bacteria going up and down in terms of compositional changes it's not necessarily a good thing our plans for further studies We'd love to do some properly, proper feeding studies looking at systemic effects. So microbiota, gut, liver, brain, seeing how everything links together. The disadvantage of those studies is they're expensive short term, but long term they're probably actually cheaper because you're doing one study to cover everything rather than 16 or 17 different st smaller studies to get the same information. We'd also like to do feeding studies in humans to see whether we can replicate some of the protective effects maybe imaging studies, but again that's long term and they're kind of thing we're sort of applying for funding for at the moment.